Philippe Lonke. And to introduce him, I actually need a piece of paper because Louis Philippe is an engineer, an explorer, an adventurer, a project consultant, a speaking coach, if everybody wants some advice, and an entrepreneur. He has done 15 expeditions on five continents. And if there's any environmentalists among you thinking you must be flying everywhere and polluting, he's actually often raises the wor raised awareness for ecological causes and was knighted by Jane Goodall in the European Parliament for raising awareness, awareness about water pollution in fragile environments. He's also a fellow of the Explorers Club in New York. He's a fellow of the Royal Geography Society, and he was a torchbearer at the London Olympic Games. As you see, he likes to be announced as a very accomplished person. <laughs> and I asked him in advance whether I was allowed to make that joke, and I was. <laughs> but anyways, Louis Philippe is with us to talk about the first expedition he ever failed, which was in 2013 in Bolivia. And he failed by abandoning because he didn't even have the means of communications to tell people where they could find his eventually dead body. Louis Philippe, please tell us the story. Good evening. Um, oh, yeah, better sit here. So I'm going to first start with a few definitions, though, like what's the difference between an adventurer and an explorer. So in brief, an adventurer is a person that takes risks. So it's uncertain that the expedition will succeed. An explorer will come back with scientific knowledge that he can share with, let's say, humanity. I do both, depends, sometimes I'm more an adventurer, sometimes more an explorer. Uh, what doesn't support it means, there's a few definitions about this, but let's put it this way today, unsupported is that there's no support at all, you are completely on your own, there's no one uh, giving you food. So my idea was to go uh, to the Salars of Bolivia, this is South America in yellow, it's the biggest map here, and I wanted to, to become the first idiot to um, try crossing the two Salars. Uh, someone had tried, uh, actually a few people had tried and succe successfully crossed uh, the, the Salar of, of Uyuni, but because the two Salars are brothers from an ancient lake 40,000 years ago, to me it made sense to cross them together. And, and I went on, so I, I, I took a big uh, pack uh, and I decided it was possible to do what was in my pack, mainly water. And in my water, I failed because I put a lot of salt in my water, actually way too much salt. Salt in my water will help to, um, get the, the, to keep the moisture inside my body so I don't sweat too much and I don't lose water, which is good. The things that my first big mistake was to not test my water and my salt. So my water was more salty than, than seawater. It was absolutely horrible. I nearly vomited uh, each time I was drinking it. So it's good because I didn't want to drink too much of my water. Uh, and, uh, but um, that, that was it. So second mistake was that I went uh, with way too much equipment. So my poles were of big metal. My pack was 56 kilograms at the start. Uh, even trying to put it on myself, I had to roll on the ground, put it on my pack and try to do some kind of push-ups that sometimes I lost my balance and I fell on the ground. And it was another two, three minutes, yeah, two, three minutes to try again to put it on my pack. Um, and yeah, and also the, the big boots I had there, so I thought like boots are very, very nice. You know, these boots are made for walking and that's what they do one day. Is, I'm gonna walk all over you, that's what I thought, but I completely failed with the desert. Uh, that's a moment where I was actually not happy. Actually, um, I didn't was really happy in that expedition. Uh, we are used to suffer, to have pains, but you know, when you find a little rock and you can sit, you, re you are really happy because it's, it's one minute less to put the backpack on your back. Um, yeah, n very not happy at all, pains, uh, stomach problems, and I forgot to say that the first two hours of my trek, because of the salt and the altitude, I started bleeding on my nose, so it was very encouraging, and, and, and the spirits were very high in this expedition. I was actually not at my place, like, 
this photo shows like really where where I, where I was. I was like a little bit on the side of this expedition, not really prepared, not enough. Uh, I better have test uh, more of, of equipment, and well, th that's actually a fun part is that um, I I had um, thunder and. I, I I didn't want to kill my my tent because it was higher than me, so I better get the thunder on me than killing my tent, because the thunder falls on the things that is the highest, and I have no metal and there's metal in my tent. But yeah, definitely not a good idea uh, and a failure. So I started north and I finished here where there's a small island, and uh, this is where I decided to abandon because the last remaining part. So the, the pink part is 90 kilometers, and I had 4.5 liters water at that time remaining. Um, still enough food, because with the salt I had promised to eat food, so I was actually throwing my food away. And uh, because I had two massive blisters on my heel, my speed was about two kilometers per hour, and I made the calculations that to do, uh, with the remaining water, I only could walk 30 hours, which I needed to have uh, an average speed of three kilometers an hour, so I decided to abandon. So like this photo, I was completely broken. And th the, the biggest thing when you abandon is that you are thinking like, do I continue, do I stop, do I continue, do I stop? Mentally, it's very hard because you, you don't know what to decide. You have this passion to say, I can perhaps continue. There's always hope, but like I said, when you don't have means of communications, it would be completely stupid to die. So failure is okay, dying not really. And, and uh, oh, lessons learned, so I'm really busy with it. Um, so first lesson that I learned on that expedition is that I need to be absolutely lighter, so I need to get rid of equipment I don't need. The second thing is that I need to have better equipment. Metal poles are not so good. Now I have carbon poles, lighter as well. Um, of, and if you want to fail, uh, and you know you're going to fail, please try to fail fast. The, the faster you fail, the faster you're home and you can eat chocolate. Really, <laughs> it helps. So that's, uh, perhaps I had another one. Um, yeah, so that's about the last slide. Um, so failure is always there to help because you learn something new. That's actually not in Bolivia. That was in Dead Valley in November. I'm not going to tell what happened in Dead Valley. Um, but the idea is that the lessons that I learned in Bolivia, I applied them to uh, here in Dead Valley last November. And the, the biggest failure is if you don't make a second attempt, right? So normally in September, or October this year, I'm going back to Bolivia, and I'm going to walk to the end, hopefully. And if I fail, I'm going to learn something new. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, questions. <laughs> <laughs> There's a light. I have the light in my eyes. I was blind on a, on a big mountain one day, and I have problems with light. Anyway, uh, is there any light like this, then? Let's start with the second one because Thanks. the first one is always when, hard. When you gave up, did you walk back? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that one. Uh, no, where I stopped, uh, and that was my, my plan B. Well, plan B was stopping and exit, so there was not really a, a plan B in, in, in as such. Uh, the idea is that where I stopped, there's an island, and some of you, raise the hand who's been on Saladio Uni. Only one, two, uh, uh, not many. So go there, not not the way I do, please. Um, so where where the, where I stop? There's an island where tourists uh, go with four wheel drives. They go from the south. They go on the island. They they do these photos, you know, where they jump and they do a perspective photos, and then they go back home. They stay max five six hours with tours, and if they have their own four wheel drive, yeah, they perhaps stay one or two nights. Uh, but not, uh, I did six nights, and breathing is really hard. Uh, um, a German friend of mine, he, uh, he crossed uh, only a uni uh, three years ago, and he had worse problems than me because he started spitting uh, blood from his lungs. Thanks for sharing. No, no worries. <laughs> Enjoy your meal. <laughs>
Hi. Were you all alone? Because it looks like the pictures uh, were made by I don't, I don't by see you, please. Oh, Hi. there you are. Were you all alone? Because it looks like the pictures were made by someone else. Um, I have a, a friend called Mr. Tripod. <laughs> and there's a really nice thing. Actually, I hate it. We only have 10 seconds. And that's why it's very hard to have. Nice. I would love to show also the side or the fact that you see it's, it's uh, big. But yeah, I use photos on, on, um, with the tripod. And that's why in my some films, you can see uh, well, on, online, you, you don't have re the camera moving unless it's an expedition that is not unsupported, which means supported, which means there's perhaps a cameraman or someone holding the camera. So I'm, I was completely alone, but uh, I crossed one morning a guy with his uh, moped going to work, crossing the Salar. And he said I was stupid and, uh, <laughs> and uh, that I should not be there. And uh, I, I told him, can you give me a ride perhaps? He said, no. I said, so I continue walking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, I don't think it's stupidity. Perhaps some madness. Uh, question, yes. So you must have been doing mental somersaults when you were um, doing this trick. How did you turn off your inner critic? My, my internal what? Uh, your inner critic or the demons inside your head that said, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do this. Oh. Um, there, there's two ways to, to keep you moving forwards. Um, the first thing is think of something positive at the end. Could be chocolate or a beautiful girl that will hug you, but it never happened to girl. Chocolate, I have to buy it, but girls is never there. Or, or you believe there's a polar bear behind you, but actually I've never been seeing a polar bear, so I have to th try something else. Perhaps my boss, yeah, my boss is behind me. But the, yeah, the idea is that, and the most important is to think of something positive. But the things that become you are getting tired because you do 15 to 17 hours walking per day with, in, in extreme conditions that you add, there, there's of course worse, you know, you can be at more minus 40 on, on the Everest. But the thing is that because you're moving all the time, you get so tired at the end that you can completely break mentally. Um, it happened one time, that's another story, uh, but at that moment, when, when it happened, I, I knew that I was completely tired, that the possible next ash action I would do would uh, get the expedition to fail, get me injured, or perhaps lead to death, or if I was with a companion, could lead to the death of someone else. So, um, yeah, this is not I mean, that's, that's the only tip I have, and... For the moment, it works. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Sorry, I, I I could perhaps read the book next time about motivation and kind of trips, and but I'm I'm I don't just tell what I have. I'm I'm not gonna invent anything that I read in books. I do read books sometimes. Yes. Thanks. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you ha you said your uh, backpack was what fifty six kilos. Yes. Uh, and uh, how much of that is tripod? <laughs> actually, yeah. Actually, that's a good question because my tripod was also very very big and heavy. I think it was about a kilo two hundred. This one. Yeah. Now, but. Uh, Two new ones. One is a uh, uh, 300, and one is a monopod with a small tripod at the end. It's it's also less. But yeah, I have several tripods, and they're getting lighter with time. Thanks. Yes, uh, there's a hand over there. So then, why do you do it if it's a constant battle with your physical? part and you always think about something positive which is at the end what do you get in the meantime okay, the, the easy answer because I'm mad <laughs> um, the, the real reason why I do I mean the solo hard ones is uh, first reason is to see beautiful landscapes okay there's another way I could do it with a bicycle or a car but usually when you are walking alone two things happen one you can access locations that are very hard to access with the bike or certainly not with a car that's one and two you can approach animals in a way that they cannot be approached when you make a lot of noise especially when you're alone because i'm i'm not yet speaking to myself loudly uh, i don't make noise so it happens that i've been seeing 
from small birds, rare birds, lizards to uh, big snakes, uh, very, very close. And that I were, they were not afraid because walking, you go rather f slow, especially with the big backpack. Um, but of course, on the Salardo Uni, there's not much life on it. Even life fled because there's nothing else to kill except me. Yeah, here, hi. Um, besides the moment you decided to stop or you had to, what was the worst moment during the trip and what made you go further? I didn't think about that one yet. <laughs> um, I, yeah, wow. What was the worst? Oh yeah, that 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 one was uh, actually not not um, not nice. Um, at a certain time, I think on day four, I found a puddle of water, green water, and said, "Oh, perhaps a good idea is to try to filter that water." It was like very very green, like Gatorade, but it's not Gatorade. Um, and perhaps I can mix it with my salty water. So I started boiling it because I had no no pills. But it took me four hours to boil, I think, three or four liters of water. And, you know, I, I burned myself a bit. You know, it, you, you like doing this in the heat, like, you know, with the sun reflection, it's, it's nearly on your body 40 degrees. Plus, you have the heat of the stove. And at a certain time, I found out uh, that's also kind of failed, that I had no more gas anymore. So I had to eat cold. And my spaghetti, when you eat it at night without water, you have to eat it like like you know like raw spaghetti it's uh, it's a bit hard um so that went you know the, the morale went even lower when i found out i had no gas because i knew that uh, during the night we, where it was just just above freezing i could not get warm uh, warm drinks and and eat properly and that's not really nice to know of sorry about that um how come you didn't control a little bit better your risks? So uh, we live in the 21st century, so one would think that it's maybe easy to, you know, carry a GPS or, or use internet or any kind of light device that would help others locate you and reduce this possibility that you lose your life in your adventure. So the question is why I didn't bring any, let's say, safety equipment? Exactly. How, how come you didn't consider, okay. you know, ways of reducing these risks? Okay. Um, actually, on that trip, I was on eight eight month journey in South America. I did four expeditions in eight months. And I didn't bring, I have a satellite phone. I had it in that valley. I I thought I don't have it there because there's a few escapes like this island. There are people. Of course, if, if I would have fallen 20 kilometers away in the middle of nowhere, there, there would be a, a big chance. But it's hard to get injured on something completely flat. The, the worst is dehydration and collapse, which uh, happened on, on day five at 4 p.m. I had the maximum temperature, and I, I felt that my head was turning, and I was going to get potentially unconscious and fall. And at that right moment, I noticed from like here, from my um, my trekking poles, that there was shade. It's kind of obvious, of course, there's shade when when the when the light. I mean, the sun is not vertical. And because I saw it, I said, "Oh, if I put my backpack right um, on the ground, it's still high. I put my uh, walking sticks, my poles, to leave it, and I'll I'll have a bit of shade." So I had about. Maximum 50 by 50 centimeters of shade, and I put my head there, and I just rested for an hour. And actually, the, because of the sun was turning, I had to move every every five ten minutes, so a bit along the way. But um, but it worked. I cooled down, and at 5 p.m., one I was cooler because I didn't move for an hour, and two the sun was also going a little bit down. Perhaps I lost five degrees of temperature, not me, but the air. And, and then I was. Uh, a walking machine because at night uh, you, you are like a train. Well, that's actually how I feel, but I'm not like a train, but it's a feeling. Okay, we've seen there are some more questions, but are you staying with us for a drink afterwards? I should, if everyone pays me a drink, yeah. I'll, Perfect. I'll probably stay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first to pay you one. Okay, thank you. Thank you.